how to handle the ring of fire. Sit with me for a minute and I will tell you how you can get through the ring of fire with no meds. And just for listening today, I would love to offer you my tearing cheat sheet. This is going to talk to you about how you can birth your baby gently and beautifully with no tearing. If you're interested, let me know below and I will connect you with that resource. If you don't know me, my name is Kristen and I am a pregnancy coach. I work with mamas all over the world. Every week, I'm bringing you practical tips on what you can do to give your baby a beautiful birth and a beautiful beginning. Now, I would love for you to follow me. Just hit the subscribe button and you will get every tip as soon as I publish it. Now, again, let's talk about what you can do to prevent tearing and handle the ring of fire without any medication during your baby's birth. Remember, the first thing that you need to know is that prevention starts during pregnancy. You may not be thinking that or even realize that, but the reality is, is that having a hand or handling the ring of fire, sorry guys, I'm off of a one hour client call and so my brain is definitely starting to give out on me. Real mama moment for you. Anyways, handling the ring of fire, it starts during your pregnancy, okay? You can do so many things during pregnancy to prepare your body to be able to open softly and gently, which minimizes the ring of fire and also increases your chance of giving birth over what the midwives call an intact perineum. It basically means all of the lady parts stay nicely the way that they're supposed to, or if there are skid marks or small abrasions, they heal up quickly. So that starts in pregnancy and it starts with a good diet. Excellent diet keeps you and your tissues healthy. This includes things that aren't super popular right now. For example, getting good healthy fats in your diet. A lot of moms are still scared of fat because of all of the anti-fat hype that we've literally been living with for decades. It's starting to change now, but you need good healthy fats. You need plenty of protein because that's literally the building block of your baby and your body. You need good hydration. There are so many points of good diet. And they really make a difference because supple, healthy, well-nourished tissues just open and soften for your baby better. Now, conditioning is another thing that makes a huge difference. Remember, we're talking about what you can do during pregnancy. Conditioning is actually the number one thing I would say you could actively do. I have all of my clients keep a food diary, take what they're eating into account every day, but conditioning is really important specifically when we're talking about this time when you're pushing your baby out and you want to push through or even without that ring of fire. If you've seen my sixth baby's birth, if you haven't, drop a line below, I'll link you to it. You've seen where I pushed him out to the point where nobody in the room realized that he was born except for me. You can actually see in that video where my midwife's hands are on the shoulders of one of my older sons and you see me pull the baby up and say something about him and she jumps just like that because she didn't realize he was born. That kind of a soft, gentle birth can really and truly happen for you. And I believe the thing that helped me with his birth and with my other births was conditioning. That means practicing throughout pregnancy to soften and open your tissues. It's true that you can't practice for birth every day, like you can't give birth every day. But you can do a lot of visualization and you can do a lot of practice to be ready for your baby's birth. So conditioning is the number two thing that you can do during pregnancy. Now the number three thing that you can do is in the midst of your birthing time. And that's gentle pushing and the positions that you choose during birth. Like I said, I just got off of a one hour client call and that was one of the things that we talked about was what if I tear, what do I do? How do I handle the ring of fire? And I talked to her about different positions and gentle pushing. See, when you push like in the hospital, when you're in that position on your back with your legs up in stirrups, I will spare you from miming that. Anyways, when you do that whole legs up in stirrups thing and you do what's called Valsalva pushing where, you know, hold your breath, count to 10, one, two, three, and so on. And the mom is like, you know, her bug eyes and bangs are bulging out and everything on her forehead. It's just crazy. That kind of pushing in that position may give the doctor a good clear shot as he's going in for the delivery, but those are not positions that are ideal for a birthing woman who wants to birth over a nice, again, intact perineum. Because those positions and holding your breath, deoxygenating every part of your body, including your baby, those sorts of things actually increase the chance of tearing and increase that burning and stinging. Your baby, when you're in that position, is actually having to work against gravity and come up to be born, 
which is, as you can imagine, it's just not the best position for birthing gently and for having your baby with less of a ring of fire. So the positions that you choose for birthing and also following mother-directed uh, positions and pushing really makes a difference. One thing that mother-directed pushing allows you to do is push only when you feel the pushing urge. Now, when you push only when you feel the pushing urge, it's true that your pushing time might be longer. You may push for a little bit longer, not a whole lot longer, a little bit longer, but the reason for that is because you're pushing only when it feels natural, and that gives your tissues time to stretch because the baby's head moves forward a little bit, and there's some pushing, and then it moves back a little bit, and, and it gives your tissues a chance to stretch and to rest and to stretch more bit by bit. So it's not all at once where, whoom, here's this baby head coming out, right? It's instead this gentle easing and then back and then easing and then back and then easing and back. And it allows your tissues to open more softly, more gently, and the ring of fire is less intense and the chance of tearing is much less as well. So those are three tips that will help you to handle pushing in the ring of fire without having to get any medications and being able to do it in a way that decreases the chance of tearing. If you'd like to know more about how you can decrease the chance of tearing, I would love to send you my tearing cheat sheet. It is one of the biggest worries that moms have when they work with me, so I'd love to send you that cheat sheet. Just let me know below. I will get back with you on that. And again, I will talk with you soon with another tip for your birth and your baby.